Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I hope to aim for Venus because our next transfer window is for a Venus flyby, 178 days. And of course we do have a contract for a Venus flyby. Now last time I tried the Mars flyby with the Navigator 1 and that did not work out. We had really really tight fuel margins so that was part of a problem. And the other problem was a control issue. Now I realize that these thrusters are technically, um, what you call it, uh, translational thrusters. Though uh, somebody said that it actually says that, but it doesn't say that. These the, uh, these don't say translation. They say these small thrusters are for upper stage or medium probe orientation, right? Uh, and it doesn't say anything about translation. Uh, but I understand the way they work. And I had put them on the bottom of the vessel so that it would control yaw and pitch, not roll. I also realized that they cannot control roll. But I had some control issues, so now I'm switching to the quad thrusters. Even though I, I think there's no particular reason why the attitude jets wouldn't have worked. Uh, but clearly, Smart ASS was not having any of it. And for some reason, even though I was able to control this stage with the attitude jets using my joystick, I was not able to control the probe itself, and so that caused an additional problem. Anyway, but uh, yeah, better to be safer, and this will give us a chance to test whether these quad thrusters are better with Smart ASS. Maybe Smart ASS and Flight Computer just don't like using the attitude jets that much. Maybe the signal delay was a problem, I don't know. Signal delay is sort of applied in an inconsistent manner, and so I don't know exactly what's going to be affected by it. Uh, so that's another consideration. Lots of things to think about. But honestly, I feel that that mi mission last time went really, really well. Um, considering we lost an engine on, on the third stage here. And uh, we also had performance loss on two engines in that stage. Uh, altogether, I think the redundancy makes me happy uh, with this rocket. It is only a 228 ton rocket, which means it's sort of a, uh, in the same class as the original Atlas. So it's doing a pretty good job here, and uh, our upper stage isn't that, that great. I mean, uh, we don't have Hydrolox engines yet, so this is all very good. And so it's just a, minor, a matter of minor tweaking, and I think this will be an improvement. If it turns out that the quad thrusters do not work out for us, uh, we can always go ahead and unlock a reaction wheel. Hopefully there's a reaction wheel somewhere in the tech tree and uh, the reaction wheels will be able to help. It's possible that Smart ASS or Flight Computer prefer the reaction wheels over the RCS thrusters. Uh, certainly a lot of other systems in KSP work that way. But, uh, yep, I think uh, we will try this. Venus shouldn't be as bad as Mars. It's certainly not as bad as far as the electric charge is concerned. So we'll have a benefit there. Um, whether we'll get into orbit around Venus, I don't know. Uh, this is not designed for that. We just want the flyby, and so that's what I'm aiming for. Everything else seems to be in order. Uh, so this is Navigator 2. It's got the RCS thruster, the RCS quads instead of the um, the little attitude jets, and so I will go with that. Okay, uh, build time is 217 days, so obviously we'll have to rush it a little bit. Um, if this doesn't work out, we really need to do uh, the geosync, or geostationary satellite contract. We should probably do that anyway. Uh, I need to check what's the duration on that. Uh, 2,200 days, so we've got time. We've got time for all of these contracts, but the build time is a consideration. If it's going to take 200 days to build one, let's just say that's pretty consistent. Uh, that means so we've got 9 rockets time before that one, 10 and 10. And we can think of it in those terms. Okay, but yeah, we need funds. This is a 17,000 uh, fund rocket, and we've only got 340,000. And I like some buffer. Okay, and I'm going to rush build a bit. Uh, one ten percent block, two. That'll get us ready in time. Well, not quite in time. Because, after all, we're going to have to roll it to the launch pad, and that takes a few days. Well, that should be pretty darn close. I think I can uh, withhold... Nah. Can I withhold the uh, other 3,400? I should have had Transfer Window Planner in here to really see the transfer. I don't know how much it will cost. Transfer Window Planner would have shown that as well. 
I think I'll, I'll hold on and uh, do this. Yeah. In some ways, Venus uh, can be tougher to hit than Mars. It's going much faster, and so it's a little bit finny more finicky. Okay. Actually, you know what? Uh, I, I started time warping, so uh, we've got some progress here. But taking a look at the fact that we've only got these two techs lined up, we could probably get some upgrade points by unlocking some other technology. Uh, where are the reaction wheels? If there are any. There they are. Well, we've got enough science. We might as well unlock flight control. Yep, upgrade point added. Very good. This is a non-RP0 reaction wheel. This is an RP0 reaction wheel. Yeah, it says it doesn't have the warning. Ranger block 3 core is the only useful thing in there. The rest is all non-RP0. Wow, even the FL-A5 adapter is not RP0? Hmm. Well, uh, so basically 90 science points just to unlock the Ranger Block 3 core. Okay, well here we have the lunar rated heat shields and also the procedural diameter, uh, the procedural fairing diameter upgrade. I think that's important. Um, we're already going to be unlocking mature orbital rocketry. That's, that's already queued up. And that'll give us some really nice engines. The Astros engine in particular I'd like. I saw Nathan Kell using the NK9 and NK9V. That's the Proton engines down there. That one I used a lot in the previous RP0 series. Okay, so we'll unlock uh, General Construction and that one, Staged Combustion. Let's do Staged Combustion after General Construction. So, I'm going to apply them uh, I'll apply two to the VAB upgrades and uh, one more to R&D. Taking a look at the uh, transfer window, uh, nine hours until the ideal, well, what the curb alarm clock thinks is the ideal timing. Not necessarily true, because we haven't got transfer window planner and uh, I'm not calculating it like that. I know uh, Mechjeb also has its own little pork chop plot thing. But advanced transfer to another planet. Uh, right. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, well, I guess we can't do that right now. <laughs> Uh, it seems like it's completely and utterly wrong. Throttle is up. SAS is on. Ignition. And watch. ASS. The proud mammoth rocket. Okay, we are through the sound barrier, very much supersonic, going through the region of Max Q, and everything is looking nominal. I said it was uh, original Atlas class rocket, that's not true. Uh, made a mistake there. It's actually a Soyuz class. It's heavier than the Atlas. By, I mean, it's like double the Atlas. Atlas was about 100 tons, the original one. I was thinking more like uh, later variants of the Atlas, which were heavier. Okay, set. And ignition. Deviation and restoration. Still sort of in the atmosphere, and we were a little bit below our prograde vector. Technically, uh, we should, yeah, we're at closer to in line with our orbital vector, somewhere between the surface velocity vector and the orbital vector. Uh, 
still, when you're in the atmosphere, the surface vector determines whether you're going to start flipping or not. LR-105 burn... I was about to say nominal, but apparently not. We've lost one engine. Oh boy. Uh, hmm. Well, uh... Let's uh, not do that. Separation. Uh, separation. And ignition. Sorry. Ignition requires thrall up. <laughs> okay, execute. We'll try and get this to orbit anyway. Well, it'll just be a uh, satellite. That's a shame. We couldn't get to Venus, but... We'll make the best of it. This is good, too. Uh, we'll... We'll have more data on these engines. We remember, we, this is the stage where we had a lot of failures last time, so more data units will be helpful. Shocking that, that the LR-105 would fail like that. Okay, very good. Separation. I'm gonna test the RCS thrusters. Well, it looks like they're very definitely working. I would like to lock the probe's fuel. And RCS on. There we go. No, not, not forward. Just maintain orientation. We're sort of coasting to apoapsis right now. This has a very high TWR. Yeah, with uh, with the juice that we've got, uh, with the probe zone fuel, we've probably got uh, 4,500 or so. Uh, but we'll need at least 2,200 to get into orbit, so that's 2,300 left. That's not enough to escape Earth, Earth's SOI. So we'll get, we're going to be hanging around Earth one way or another. I guess we could go into like a Molnia-ish orbit for no apparent reason. But... Uh, the, the fuel is all storable, so I guess we could just hang out until we get some sort of contract. Though the contracts usually say uh, launch a new satellite, not uh, so we can't reposition this one. Okay, uh, the fuel should be... Okay, well this is very risky, so let's thrust forward. And throttle up, and activate. Hmm. It's gimbling doesn't seem to be working out right now. Oh, come on. Yeah, it should be gimbling, but it's not apparently gimbling. Well, I guess it's a good thing we have RCS thrusters. But yeah, I mean, obviously it should be gimbling quite a lot. Like the others did. I mean, the others uh, did a great job of turning us back to the right direction. Maybe, I don't know, Smart ASS totally not doing things? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not feeling like this engine is gimbling properly. Whoa, definitely not. What the heck? Okay, um, Smart ASS off. I'll take control, thank you. Jeez. That's the big idea. Anyway, let me uh, take uh, RCS off and see if I can control this. Mm, not very well, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem to have gimbling, this engine. 
Is that a thing that test flight can do? Can it mess up the gimbling? It doesn't say anything. Not particularly concerned about the lopsided orbit, as long as we get to orbit. Okay, uh, 968 by 151. And we probably have like 1700 meters per second of fuel left. I, I have not gotten locked the probe zone stuff. Can we get some visual observations at least? Wow, that took a while. No, we've done it before. Okay, we'll extend the commutron on the tail for communication's sake. Don't know if we need to uh, use the dishes right now. We could train one of the dishes to uh, the moon. It's just using the hydrazine from here, but it's using quite a lot of it compared to the other thrusters. Uh, yeah, the yeah, electric charge restoration, one unit per second. Okay. We, uh... We do have stage recovery. I really should try something with stage recovery and see if we can recover some of these things. Yeah. That's an interesting idea. Boosters, recoverable boosters would be nice. Not really RP0-ish though. Well, while trying that Venus mission, we did unlock basic capsules, and so now we've gotten the contracts for crewed missions uh, past the Karman line and crewed orbital. So those give us 12 years, so we might as well pick them up. That's plenty of time. And I think I'm going to try and do a test vehicle for that. So we'll build a test article to see whether we can do that safely and well uh, we'll see how that goes I won't make any commitments uh, uncrewed moon landing needs to be a thing that happens too I think we're we're really close to that actually but let's try let's see about uh, going back to doing Kerbal missions after losing Jeb twice uh, maybe we'll be able to do something successful for Kerbal who knows Okay everyone, I think I've finished the design, but I've encountered a little snag. Um, see that attachment node at the top? I have no idea where it's coming from. Uh, yeah, that's a weird thing. This is just a nose cone, procedural nose cone. Um, okay, not that one. Not that one. And obviously the tank has the node in the right place. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. I can't have a node up there like that. Um, let me just make sure. Okay. Height. Yeah. That's attached. This is attached to the right place. Okay, took the rest of the rocket off. Now it doesn't have it. So it has to be something from the rest of the rocket. Node still there? Node is not still there. Something to do with the engine cluster. So is it the tank or the engine? I mean, that's the only two possibilities I can see. Take the engine off. It's the engine. It's one of those things, you know, the Venn's... Stock revamp messes with the engines and adds nodes, but I think it's added a node such that... I don't know. I don't see where the node is. Oh, there it is. See? See? Uh, this this engine weirdly has a node way up there. I didn't notice that about the LR-105s before. What the heck? Is that going to cause any problems? I mean, I guess it hasn't really been causing much of a problem so far. Then again, and I mean, who knows? I don't want to use this version. Same engine, different mount. Um, well, I guess I'll just have to put up with it. Okay, well, uh, on that troubling note, let's go through this rocket. Putting it back together again. So, the capsule. 
all obviously has a able avionics package on top so that we can control it without a Kerbal in and then there's this service module with solar panels RCS and we've got eight separation motors tuned for three seconds to provide about eight thrust weight ratio uh, even if these engines don't fire it's about that um, we can switch them around uh, okay well 6.8 TWR and so that should be good enough for uh, abort which we absolutely do need so we do have a launch abort system it is uh, action group to the abort key uh, decouple and activate the engines so there is that and obviously the parachute on top there inline parachute uh, the service module itself only gives us 350 meters per second which is like uh, if we really need to complete orbit with that uh, but it's mainly just deorbiting and orientation uh, we have uh, some orientation thrusters up here using hydrazine this is mainly a food water and oxygen tank though with some electric charge so that's that uh, this is the delta avionics package here right and then the third stage of the rocket is an RD0109 so that's what we have there and this is the LR105 which failed on the last mission so who knows we can pack that up there was a four avionics package there and then at the bottom of the rocket two LR89s I've tried to make this a very spare rocket it's really tight on the margins uh, I didn't want to put three LR89s at the bottom because then the TWR goes above four at the end of the stage so I was trying to avoid that deliberately I would want a gentle ride for our Kerbal but that also means a long time to orbit 12 minutes and 10 seconds which is about the limit for what I would do so yeah it's a bit dodgy but we're gonna test it out 125 days to build 10,000 funds this is very similar to Atlas I mean we've got the two LR89s at the bottom we've got the LR105 so those stages are similar to Atlas but adding in the RD0109 stage means that we don't have to add the super lightweight tanks that Atlas had which was a little bit dodgy um, so we have that benefit and also we're carrying a heavier service module than Mercury had alright and of course uh, we're basically carrying our escape system along with us all the way the side benefit to that being that we could use those uh, engines to retro for instance or do something else uh, if necessary so there is that plus side alright I think everything's alright so we are not going to have a Kerbal in we are going to have this uncrewed and let's build one of these okay here we are with this uh, capsule named after our our twice perished pioneer astronaut Kerbonaut Jeb the Jeb capsule let's hope uh, this fares better than he has in this series throttle up SAS on I'm just using the capsules own ablator by the way I didn't put an additional heat shield we'll see how that goes okay here we go ignition and launch and off the smart ASS Okay, transonic. Pretty much supersonic now. There's a the pause, you know, every so often it has a pause. It's actually really annoying with this rocket for some reason. Okay, maximum dynamic pressure. 
I should probably just hold it here for the remainder so that we don't have any of the flipping problem. Is that pause? Jeez. Okay, separation. Ignition. I forgot to tune those to three seconds instead of uh, what they are at default. So they were a little bit overly energetic. Oh, well, so far so good. First stage went well. We are still go for orbit. Oh, looking pretty good. Except for the stuttering. The stuttering is bad. I don't know what's doing that now. Is it tag life support? I mean, obviously that's the only thing different from all of our probe launches. Jeez. By the way, if you're wondering about abort modes, if uh, something were to go wrong with this engine, uh, the RD-0109 would probably be used to do a uh, boost back sort of thing. In other words, decelerate the craft so that's more like an Alan Shepard sort of arc instead of uh, uh, trying to get to orbit because we wouldn't have enough juice for orbit at that point if there's a performance loss on this or something like that. Um, if there was a problem with the RD-0109, the abort system and the one kilonewton thrusters would have to try and get into orbit as much as possible while actually not trying to get to orbit. Uh, they would push the periapsis to uh, about uh, what you got 75 kilometers at best if there was enough juice I don't, uh, in any case the chances are the capsule would be coming in hard uh, at that point so I'm still not sure about the whole descent mode thing we'll try it we'll turn descent mode on and see what happens all right getting ready for the end of the second stage okay set Ignition. Alright, RD-0109 has ignited. Thrust weight ratio is 0.57 here, so... A long six minutes, really. Well, at this point it looks like we'll need to use the one kilonewton thrusters in order to complete orbit. It doesn't look like this stage has enough at this point. Partly because of the low thrust weight ratio here and the fact that we have to continue pitching up. I think I'll have to evaluate the system before really, really going with it with a Kerbal, even if re entry turns out alright. Okay. Getting close to orbit now. Almost done with the stage. Okay, set. And ignition to the one kill. Oh, RCS on. Yeah, let's have RCS on. And that stage is gonna re enter and one kill Newton thrusters. Yeah, it's it's not really handling very well with the RCS uh, not at the center of mass. We now have no connection. Fortunately, that doesn't seem to affect Smart ASS or or my ability to shut down the engine engines. I'm gonna try and get into a relatively circular orbit. That's good enough. Alright, 227 by 213 and we have um, no signal so I can't turn SAS on and if I start time warping smart ASS is going to not be working so we'll be flipping around and around but let's just go ahead with that 
we will reacquire over Australia to do the retro burn. But yeah, the margins are pretty darn tight when you look at it. We still have the little separatrons for emergencies. 308 meters per second there. Okay, we have acquisition. Lots of RCS overuse. Okay, well, um, that's close enough. Retro. Gotta aim for 75 kilometers. Okay, that is good enough. And gonna let it keep us at retrograde though. I think I think for this Oh shoot, that's not what I wanted to do. Shoot 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 shoot. I want a caps lock, not left shift. Um prograde please. But what I was gonna do, uh let's arm parachute, check the info. Uh pre deployment pressure is what I want. That was misconfigured. Okay. Oh, uh, it was probably configured up here. It's just um, this uh, combination of parachutes. There's a secondary chute here. Okay. It's a double. Will we continue to have signal. Uh, I think we'll probably hit the atmosphere between here and Hawaii. So uh, let's have it uh, go retrograde, adjust our orbit a little bit so that the periapsis is at 75 kilometers. Now the kick from the decoupler, I don't know how strong that's going to be. We can't do forward and back with the thrusters up here. They're just uh, mainly roll control and yaw and pitch. Okay. Speaking of which, uh, I wanted fine controls on, yeah. Ooh. Uh, weird light effect, possibly, no. Huh, I thought that was the scatterer menu thing. Hmm, weird. I wanted a scatterer menu because I think that's what would fix this, but okay. Right. We will deal. Okay, I'm gonna unlock the HTP. God, it's using too much though. Maybe smart ASS off, SAS on. Well, we don't really have a retrograde thing. Oh, it's gone. Okay, that weird effect. All right. With that done, we will uh, separate off this stage which means I want that. Oh, I'll just manually do it. I don't feel good about staging through the normal staging process. Decouple. Okay. Well, we, we knocked our periapsis down to 69, so the next time when I do retro, we should go to 80 kilometers to get 75. Okay, uh, so that's alright. Let us Turn descent mode. Oh, no connection. Shoot. Okay. Well, we'll have connection over Hawaii. And that should be good enough timing. Here we go. Alright. Turn descent mode on. We are approaching Baja California and Mexico. Currently connected through Vandenberg. Gonna set roll to zero because it was rolling off to one side. Okay, that's tilting the wrong way. Yeah. Maybe I should flip it around or something. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I should flip around. Yeah, 
Yeah, that that pr produces a nicer pitch situation. That makes it seem more like descent mode is a thing. We'll see about the G-forces though. Charred ablator is building up. Uh, we've lost almost half of our ablator already. We are past 5 G's. Rate of ablation is decreasing, so we should be all right there. Pretty much need all of the ablator that this comes with. Okay, uh, it looks like 5.55 G's, which is not too bad. So uh, we'll have to remember roll 180, yaw zero, don't control pitch using smart ASS, RCS on. And uh, yeah, everything looks to be all right as far as the G-forces is, is concerned. And of course, descent mode appears to have worked with this orientation. And now it's just a matter of parachute deployment. We are uh, over Texas, actually. We can hope for a splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, maybe. But no, I think we're going to end up like... Uh, we're going to end up in Houston. <laughs> I think... Uh, no, actually, Houston's up there, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Galveston Bay? Somewhere around there. Funny, with descent mode off, it's tilting away from retrograde even more. So that's odd I think okay we should be getting parachute deployment anytime soon now we seem to be landing near a populated area okay parachute deployment many parachutes apparently one shoot and then a triple shoot I probably misconfigured something there. That's this double shoot thing. I configured one of the shoots, but didn't configure the other. Okay, we have parachute deployment. Odd parachute configuration, but pod is at 4.9 meters per second. That is fine. Alright. Recover vessel. Okay, well, we got 1.7 science for recovering that. We were pretty close to the KSC, so we got 90.7% of the value of the pod. That's good. So we successfully tested our first orbital crew capsule, but the margins were so tight I have to think about that one and whether it's really safe for a Kerbal. We've got the abort system, but there are situations where if an engine quits, and that can happen with test flight, we would be in deep trouble. So I'll think about that for the next episode, and for now I'll, I'll conclude it here and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.